Thursday, Mass of the Lord's Supper. Most years, I focus on the foot washing or the Eucharist and priesthood. Today, I want to talk about why those two things are on the same exact day. And the answer is, love does not exist without suffering. Suffering is the answer to the riddle of love, and love is the answer to the riddle of suffering. I will go as far to say that that annoying couple you've seen, that the really, really lovey-dovey couple, clearly in their honeymoon phase, they, they never fight. Um, what one wants to do, the other one wants to do, they're in perfect sync, so that they're always doing the exact same thing each other wants. To be perfectly clinical, that is not a loving relationship. It's affectionate, it's romantic, it's probably intimate, but it does not count as a loving relationship until both of them, not one, both of them are willing to suffer and give of themselves for the other. That is what love is. Jesus washes the feet of his disciples because feet are gross. We all know it's true. Uh, I think I may have been a little aggressive on my advertisement for foot washing. A lot of people said, Father Justin, I'm not doing it. My feet are really, really nasty. And I said, well, bring it on. I'm not afraid. But the fact is, it's, it's true. I mean, you have to deal with it. The fact is, the vast, vast, vast majority of people do not want to wash feet under any circumstance. Some people will do it for money, but no one wants to do it. Jesus said, pretty darn sure he didn't get paid for it. He did it out of love. He was advertising to his disciples how much he loves them. He is willing to do something gross for their sake. It is an exercise of love. And that was supposed to warm them up the loving sacrifice of the Eucharist, which of course is tied to the sacrifice on the cross. The ultimate, the ultimate example of how love is expressed in suffering. Jesus' suffering love on the cross is as powerful as it gets. The foot washing and the Eucharist lead up to that tremendous love on the cross. So for today, I want to give you one piece of my, uh, my past that applies to this, and then hopefully a more uh, related example that, if not the majority of you, at least the respectful minority of you that directly go through. So for me, you know, I talk about it all the time, I was in the Peace Corps. One rule of Peace Corps, you do not snub the local culture. The whole point of Peace Corps is to present yourself as an American and to live another culture, which means to deny a local culture that you don't agree with, that is a direct opposition to what the Peace Corps is all about. So when I was in training, they said, you're going to Burkina Faso. One local culture, one local custom. If someone offers you something, you know, a snack or a treat or whatever, take it, you pop it in your mouth, it is the height of rudeness to decline something that someone offers you. Which means, if you're a vegetarian, and someone gives you a leg of lamb, you smile, you say thank you, you eat it, and you cry later in the privacy of your own home. Because you're insulting their culture otherwise. I'm like, okay, that makes sense. So I finished training. Go to village, one of the first things I did was introduce myself to the principal of the school I would be teaching at. So I go to Padre's house and, uh, you know, he's got his kids running around and, you know, we chat a little bit. Yeah, you're excited. Yep, yep, really good. I got my reading and all that. Yeah, we're starting in two months. Yep, sounds good. So, yeah, so we're very, very grateful that we have you here, Justin. Hey, would you like, a, would you like, a, you know, an African, you know, you know, specialty thing? Yeah, sure, why not? And he hands me this blackened, wrinkly, Thing. Well, it says the large nut. Like, what, what is this? Royal caterpillar. <laughs> I, I think for five solid minutes, I tried to 
building up the willpower to put that thing in my mouth, I just couldn't do it. And if his kids are laughing at me, like everyone's having a great time, just staring at me. And for the record, just for the record, he knew exactly what he was doing. It is perfectly common knowledge in that country that royal caterpillars are revolting food for white people. He did this knowing that I would be grossed out. 50% means a trickster anyway, I found out that they, uh, found that later. 50% is uh, making, not, not making fun of me. He was having fun with me. The other half was testing me. And eventually, I don't know how I did it, like, pop, crunch, 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 crunch. <laughs> did it. Um, in a weird, twisted way, that's love. Because I cared about why I was there. It is one thing to say that you love all peoples and all cultures. But do you love other cultures enough to actually do something that you don't want to do? Or did you join Peace Corps to have a two-year vacation on the, uh, the expense of the U.S. government? It's moments like that that prove what you really care about. Now here's my other thing, because I'm pretty sure most of you haven't lived through something like that. Um, for my second example for today about love and suffering. Sorry guys, I am throwing you under the bus today. Ladies, you have my permission to, to giggle at the discomfort of the men here today. For tonight only, that is acceptable. Men, I'm asking you to uh, relive one of the most awkward phases of your entire life. The earliest days of your dating experience. I'm not talking about in sixth grade when your girlfriend was the one you sat next to in the movie theaters. I'm talking about when you first started really liking a girl and you really wanted to somehow win her respect. You know, I'm talking about that face. Good chunk of you have been in that, that, that position. You know, maybe, maybe high school, maybe college, a few late bloomers, whatever. You know, meet a girl, she likes you, you like her. You're having chit chats, chit little chat, and you eventually go out with her. Go out on a date. And there's a pretty good chance that a lot of you got dragged into some kind of situation where she wanted to go out dancing. I'm going to give it a 90% chance that as she was dragging you to your doom, you were thinking that you would literally do anything else but wiggle around on that dance floor. You were probably thinking, honey, is there any way I can prove my love for you? But like, like, the big guy just punched me in the gut and let me go watch a movie or something. Like, most men, uh, unless they took dance lessons or whatever, that is a very, very uncomfortable moment. But if you did it, you felt ridiculous. And let's face it, you probably looked ridiculous. You did it because you liked her liked her enough to do something that you didn't want to do. That is the beginning of a loving relationship. A loving relationship is not the ridiculous fantasy of finding someone that loves exactly what you love and you're never going to fight, you're never going to disagree, and I'm sorry that it's not happened for long. A loving relationship is when you have someone and the two of you are willing to self-give, to sacrifice, to suffer if necessary, not for your sake, but for the sake of the other. That is love. Today, most of all, Jesus shows that love. He starts small by washing feet. The disciples probably didn't get it at the time. But then it leads to the Eucharist, and eventually to the ultimate act of suffering and love, Christ on the cross. And when we are willing to suffer for another, we live grace.